So NUPS 3 has been out for a little while now, since April the 20th, according to this roadmap. And they've recently released Nuxt content as well, which I've been waiting for. So I think it's time now to go and have a look at Nuxt 3 and see what we can do with it. OK, so here we are on the quick start page. So a few dependencies. You need to make sure that you've got Node installed. You need to make sure that you've got Visual Studio installed. And we need to install this Volar extension and enable takeover mode. So what does that mean? So the Visual, the Volar extension rather, um, you can just go and search the marketplace for Volar and that will install that. The takeover extension mode, you need to go to the command prompt and type in this extensions show built in extensions. And that brings up everything that you've got installed and what you're looking for if you type typescript in there it will filter that down to typescript and javascript language features and what you need to do is when you open up your folder and we'll do this in a while but you actually need to right click on it and do a disable for this particular workspace but we'll go and do that in a while so that that sets up visual studio code for us correctly so let's jump in and go over to github and create a new repository and we'll make it public and we'll do all that and then we won't add a git ignore and we will create that then we can come over copy that come over to visual studio clone a repository clone a repository from github Nux3 SSG tutorial, and we'll go to there. We'll open that up. Okay, so that's the beginnings of our application. Now let's go and do this um, turning off of these extensions that I talked about. So let's go and do that. TypeScript and turn that off just for the workspace. And I'm also going to go to my extensions and because I've got Vita installed, I'm going to disable that as well. Because Vita and Volar don't play nicely together and we only need one view JS plugin and the advised one is Volar for Nux3. So that's the extensions dealt with. Let's open up a terminal and let's do what they say so npx nuxy init nuxt app in our tutorial folder so that's that and then it says install with npm i so we can do that so we need to cd into that folder that it just created and then npm install Go and get all the packages. OK, so that's the packages installed. Then we can just do what we normally do, which is npm run dev. And that starts up v for us and gives us a site hosted at localhost 3000. So we can control click on that and see what that gives us. So starting Nux, Nux3. Ooh, nice and wait for that to finally come up and that's it we are up and running so that's what you get out of the box is this nice boilerplate web page so let's go and have a look at what actually got created but that's a good start we are actually up and running so if we open up nuxt um, we can see that we do have more of a cut down site than you would typically get with a nux2 application so it's missing a lot of the default folders. So there's no pages, there's no layouts, there's no components folders. All of those are all gone. So it's very much an opt-in model now with Nuxt 3. So let's just play around a little bit more with this and see what we can do. So we've created our site and got that running with the dev server. What about if we actually 
try and generate our static site. So let's go and npm run generate as we normally do as well. And so that's generated us this public output folder dot output dot public is what we would need to send up to a static site. So that's where our Azure hosting would come from. So what we can do also is try and replicate what would happen when we do deploy this up into Azure. So we can do that using this Nitro preset and set that to Azure Yarn build. We can set that environment variable and then inside of our Nuxt application we can do npx and then Azure Static Web Apps CLI. So this is pretending to start or doing exactly the same as an Azure Web App would start, but using our output public directory. So let's do that and see what this gives us. And that's given us another URL that we can browse to. So now if I open that one up, and come over here on localhost 4280 I get exactly the same site as I had in the other site so that's it that's our static site generated and up and running so we're pretty confident that we can build that um, when we move to Azure let's do that let's push what we've got up to our repo then we can come to Azure and inside our static web apps we can create a new web app so Nuxt3 SSG tutorial and we'll go on the free plan and we will host in West Europe and our source is GitHub and that is the account. And our main branch. Uh, let's go next. No, we don't want any tags so let's go and create that so that's our site provisioned inside of azure and we should now have a github workflow inside here and so let's go back over to visual studio and let's pull that down so that we've got that locally and as is always the case we have to go and make some changes to say where we want things pulled from. So let's go and fix up some of this. So most of this is OK. We just need to change where our app location is, which is inside of our Nuxt app folder. The API location, we'll put that as API for now. In fact, no, we'll leave that empty for now. We'll come back to that. The output folder is going to be the output public. And we also need to change the app build command to the npm run generate. So let's save that and change our build and stage that and push that up and then come over to here and let's go and have a look at our action. So as we can see, our static web app failed as we would expect because it doesn't know how to build it and it doesn't know where all the right stuff is. So now that we've changed this, let's let this build and see if this deploys. OK, so that's built. So let's jump back over to our Azure static website and let's go and open up the static website. And again, we see our static website is up and running, now being served from Azure. So three different ways to look at your site from development or from a local development static website version and also from Azure. So let's go and jump back over to the code and see how we can go about adding some extra features into this. So I'm just going to stop the site for now. So how do we go about adding pages into this app. So what we can do is we can create a folder called pages and inside there we can create a folder called main page view for instance. So inside main page let's set up our template and let's just uh, put a div in there for now with the title of our page and then what we can do is we can come over to the app view 
which at the moment, as you can see, is just this single div with this single Nuxt welcome component. So inside there, what we can do is change that to Nuxt page instead. And let's comment that out. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll create an index view in there as the default page. And we'll copy that Nuxt welcome across to the index. So we'll leave that so that that looks like that. So that's now calling just the Nuxt welcome component as it was doing in the app view. So this is our main view here. So now we can get rid of that out of there. And this is now saying render the page. So adding in the pages directory adds in the view router and adding in this Nuxt page says render anything that's in that page at this particular point in this page. So if we save that, and come back to running up our dev site and that is now up and running so we can come over here and we can refresh that and that gives us our default page which has come from the Nuxt welcome tag and then I can also go over here to main page as a root and I get just the main page over here which is coming from our main page page so that's how we can do pages but we obviously want commonality across our pages. So for now, let's just create a few of these pages and change this to my team and my team. And we'll also create one for the contact page as well, just as a placeholder. So contact us. And contact us in there. And let's go and close those out. And just save those close those off and let's talk about layouts so let's go and add in what we would normally do is create a new folder called layouts and then in there we can create our new file of new default layout which again is just another view so in here we have our template again and we also have a style which is scoped just to this particular component. And let's put some stuff in here. So inside of our main layout, we can have a section and the section contains a slot. And this is where our page content gets replaced into or injected into. So that will do for our template for now. Um, until we get prettier installed, I'm just gonna format it with prettier and save that. Uh, let's also just put in a quick style on that main layout element. So this is all the same stuff that came from my view two application. I'm not doing anything differently here. If you compare back to uh, my other video on view two. So now we've got that slot in place. We can come back over to our, our app dot view. And we can change this so that rather than a div, we have a Nuxt layout that wraps around that. So again, I'm just going to format that again. And then inside of our page, so where's our main page? Let's go there. What we need to do is specify our layout in there. So we can set up a script tag in here. And now that Nuxt 3 is happy with uh, using TypeScript, we can actually specify that we want to use TypeScript in our script rather than vanilla JavaScript. And Nux3 has some auto imports. So one of those is define page meta. So we can just specify that the layout that we want to use is new default, which is our layout that we've specified. So let's save that. And we need to do that in those other pages as well. So let's just copy that whole script block to those other pages and contact us, save all of those. Of course, what we need is something in our layout to actually prove that's working. So let's just put something in the layout to prove that that's the case for now, as there's nothing really visible in there. And it doesn't like that because I've misspelt that. That should be layouts. So let me just change that and let the dev server restart. 
And now with that up and running, you can see I get my layout and main page. But I can equally come over to, say, my team and I get my layout and my team. So let's go and add in a header component to go and make that navigation a little bit easier. So I can add a new folder and I can call that components, which again is another hardwired folder name. So anything we put in here, Nuxt is aware of and will auto import into our application. So let's create a new folder, a new file called header.view, which is what I had in my other site. And I'm just going to paste in exactly what I had in that other page. OK, so that's it. It's just a, a template with a bit of styling um, and some navigation items which are using the Nuxt link to navigate to my page, my team and contact us. So exactly those URLs that I just showed you. So let's save that. And then if I come over to back to the layout again, underneath main layout, instead of my layout, I can put the header in there and um, while we're at it we'll also go and create a footer as well because we're going to need a footer and again most of that is going to be exactly what came from my other site and let's put that after the section so the footer save that and that's given us our header and footer and some links which if i go home i get main page if i go the team i get my team so let's just finish off with a bit of styling to the site as a whole let's come over here and inside here let's create a new folder called assets and inside assets create a new folder called css and i'm going to create a new file called main.css and this again is coming from my other site. So I'm just going to copy that in lock, stock and barrel. So I've got some root CSS properties that I'm using. So that's my main CSS. And then to actually include that, and we've not talked about the Nuxt config and how that's changed. But if we come over to the Nuxt config now, you'll see that this is now a TypeScript file. So a .ts extension. So that's changed quite dramatically from, from Nuxt 2 to Nuxt 3. And what I can do inside here and what we should have done earlier as well as it advises in the documentation is if you're turning off those language features like we did at the start, then you can put this TypeScript shim false. It's advised to do it. So let's do it. And then to add in our CSS, we can add in a CSS property into this and point that at assets CSS main.css. So I can save that and I will go and configure prettier at some point because this is annoying having to do this all the time to format that up. So that's changed our Nux config, which um, V is watching for. So it's restarting that. And now when I come over to my site and refresh the page, now we get our nicely formatted up site with some styling on the on the navigation elements. And I can navigate across my pages and the page gets displayed in this section down here. So as I go to the team, I get my team. So that's it. We are up and running on Nuxt 3 with some global CSS, um, a common layout across all my pages and some pages in the application as well. So it gives you the basic start point for creating your own website. Hopefully you found this useful. And if you did, then don't forget to like this video and also subscribe because there is going to be more coming in this series specifically on Nuxt 3. So we're going to go through some of the same topics that we did with Nuxt 2. So we're going to be looking at environment variables and API calling, etc, etc. So stay tuned for some of that. And thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.